data is to be the complete sort of being so difficult and starting at YouTube and working your way out by yourself and of course it help along the way but what made you want to be here I mean, getting to this point? Yeah, well, I, I wanted, um, for a long time, before anyone knew who Lindsay Sterling was, before I started putting videos on YouTube, I was trying so many different things, much more traditional route things to make it as an artist, some of them not so traditional. I mean, I was um, I was auditioning for talent agencies, I was sending music to record labels, I was sending DVDs to every TV show I could think of. I, I mean, I, I did so many things to try to get anyone to pay attention to what I was doing. Um, and I was making just enough money by... Uh, playing college shows, and I would basically play during like lunch at college campuses, off in the corner while everybody's just trying to eat their lunch in peace, and I'd be off like rocking out in the corner. Um, and colleges would pay me just enough to do this that I was able to fund my first album by doing this. And um, so pretty much once I had content that was quality, and this was what I wanted to showcase to the world, um, that's when I discovered YouTube, and by putting videos on YouTube, um, it changed my life, and it, all, it started slowly. I mean, I, I remember my first video, it got like, you know, 20,000 views, and just being like, what? <laughs> 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 I mean, I was so over 20,000 people had seen my song, and you know, most of them liked it. A couple people made fun of me, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, so that's kind of where it all started, and then by collaborating with other artists, um, and just learning all I could about social media, and really diving into it, and making, you know, doing some things right, doing, making some mistakes, but just learning, because there was no rule book written for YouTube. And uh, so it's been, I mean, I still am just kind of trying different things all the time, and seeing what works. And that's been pretty, like, very brain stretching work, because as you're learning it, you've got to do all this research and make sure you're trying to get the right thing, and also finding your own style as well, because I, I started listening to your music about, I don't know, around last year during my school, so I, my friends introduced it to me. I, this is the music that I've been trying to look for. I, I love violin music, but I never actually found music that made my ears ring. And it's inspiring. It's just it's really good. I really love it. Well, thank you so much. I'm <laughs> Um, anybody else have any questions? I saw some other hands. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to say, please tell me you guys have questions. You know, we need some time. <laughs> yes. I'm sure we will. You know, every time we tour a part of the world, we get to go to more places. And so, you know, last time we came to Australia, we just weren't able to make it to New Zealand. This time we come, next time hopefully we'll do two shows in New Zealand. You know, every time we come to a place, we usually do, like, we've never shrunk in a tour before. We've always grown. So, hopefully... Um, we'll get to do even more shows next time. Yeah. Do you have like a song that's really kind of like, that you kind of consider your favorite of all time, whether it's just for personal reasons or whether it's just the song itself structure-wise you like? Or? I mean, I, they're all like my little babies. I mean, I wrote them all on them. Like my little kids. I definitely have favorites, you know. Um, Crystallized changed my life, so that song will always be special to me. Um, I really love Take Flight and Shatter Me off the new album just because of the personal connection I have with those songs. And I love Spontaneous Me because it's the first song I ever wrote when I discovered my new style. So those are kind of my, my favorite children. <laughs> That's allowed. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really hard to actually tour in New Zealand and Australia, you know, it's, uh, it's very difficult to get a whole tour out here, you know, financially. So we just came with pretty much, you know, all the people that were, that we needed to make the show happen. Um, when we tour, what? No, it doesn't. It does not. Just the people. No, we brought everybody that, you know, but basically I wasn't able to bring my sister. You know, I wasn't able to, my parents came with us to Europe for a couple shows just because I wanted to bring them on the adventure. You know, so I do a lot of tours. I try to bring, you know, another girl, let's just face it. Sometimes it's nice to just, I find a job for a best friend or this tour, we weren't, we just were able to bring the rock stars. So yeah, there. <laughs> um, but no, so yeah, we, uh, but 
But we were just excited to be here. Like, like I said, it's, it's, it's difficult to come to Australia and New Zealand, but I really wanted to, so we made it. So. How did you start getting fun? What is uh, Classical music actually inspired me. I was a kid when my parents loved classical music, and they would take me and my sisters to orchestra concerts, and they would play orchestral, you know, um, music in our home with this old record player. And um, I was a smart kid, and I saw that the violinist always got the solos, <laughs> and they always had the fun melodies, and so the same way like kids look up to like Taylor Swift and they're like, I want, I want a guitar, I want to see. I was like, that's a rock star, because <laughs> that's what I was exposed to. So I begged for violin lessons when I was like five, five or six. Yes. Um, Super Harley Quinn types, by the way. Um, yes. Oh, thank you. Um, just want to ask, what do you do in your downtime? Like CDs are out, school's over. What do you do? You know, I I don't I don't really stop when a tour ends. I usually have so much. I feel like I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't released a video in two months. Like I gotta make a video, and so immediately. And then also, we're already planning, you know, future tours. You know, you have to be. You also have to be so far ahead in order to make the ball keep rolling. Otherwise, you get to the end of a tour and everything stops. So um, usually, when I get off a tour, I either go into you know promo for something, or we've been touring now for months. Just the, the, the world is a big place. And we want to see it all. So, um, but I did take a week off. Like I literally took a week off for Christmas, <laughs> and I went home to Arizona and I just sat around with my family and we played games. And that's my favorite thing to do. Yeah. Have you ever thought of doing something like a classic, a classical piece in an electronic spin on it? So like fly the bumblebee, but like a dubstep thing or something? Fly the bumblebee. Um, I have thought of that before because. Um, I mean, that just kind of combines both the worlds I came from in a very cohesive way, so it would be really cool. I like to see it. Uh, yes? Um, do you have a favorite cover? Favorite cover? I love working with the piano guys, um, doing Mission Impossible with them. Um, just, they're, they're musical geniuses, and they are such fun guys. If the piano guys, I don't know if they've toured here yet, but if the piano guys are ever in your vicinity, and you have a chance to go, their show is amazing. You know, that's the big question. Um, I, you know, I'm going to start working on this next album when I get off of uh, probably this next tour. I'm going to start to go into the studios and at least try to figure out. A lot of times, they kind of, like my last album, I was trying to think, how am I going to make this different than my first? And it just kind of took on a life of its own. Um, and so I'm, I'm curious to see kind of what life this new album takes takes on because I definitely want it to be a progression. I want it to be a step up or at least a slight, uh, you know, in a different direction at least than my last album. Yeah. Um, I, so I started acting when I was six years old um, and then I stopped during high school because I was getting bullied a lot and stuff for it. And uh, when you released Kind of the Opera, it actually inspired me to get back into it. Nice. I love this so much. Um, so I just want to say thank you for having all the musical theatre elements and more acting stuff. I really love it. It keeps me inspired. Um, what's your favourite musical? <gasps> Wicked. Oh, <laughs> hands down. I wish I could see that again. <laughs> we actually um, just filmed a Ladies of Rob medley. Because um, we went and saw it when we were in London on our last tour. And I was like so inspired. Like you were saying, I was like, ah. So um, yeah, I just filmed that. It'll probably be, it'll be out sometime this month. So I'm very excited about that. And I filmed it like a play. I wanted it to Thank feel like the actual play. So, so it's very much like that. Uh, yes. Uh, obviously, you're, you're on a sort of a flying visit uh, coming, coming straight from Saudi Arabia and uh, back, back up to the East tomorrow. Uh, do you sort of wish for a bit of downtime in the country? Yes, to to, like, especially you know, here. Well, I, I was lucky enough. I came to New Zealand um, several years ago with Devin Graham, and I did film Lord of the Rings. And we were here. I was here just basically as his camera assistant. And then between takes of what he was working on, I would like run in the car and throw on my white dress and like go on the side of the road and play. And then we go on and shoot the next thing for him to do. And but literally, we filmed that whole video just off of the highway, so cars were driving by. <laughs> Full on expressions. I'm like, I am an elf right now. I'm an elf princess. Um, yeah, right. Just happened to be right by the highway. <laughs> One that was. I remember.
remember there was one that was particularly bad. It was on a hike, and all these hikers, like really cool, like New Zealand hikers, like dudes that are like their shirts are like tied around their heads, and they're all really attractive, and I'm playing my white dress. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was a perfect one. <laughs> also, some of the parts when I was just walking around it looked like a, just a really awkward wedding photo shoot. <laughs> I'm like, who needs, a, who needs a groom? What about me? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, because of that, I, I got sidetracked. Uh, I got to see some of the amazing sights of New Zealand then. I went to the Shire, which was like one of the coolest things ever. And um, I went to the, the Glowworm Cave, which was awesome. So I was telling these guys, I was like, you have to come back so that I can show you all these awesome things that I've seen. Yeah. Um, How do you manage to get in your downtime between all your rehearsal videos, all the tools you do, and don't stay on the plane because it doesn't count? <laughs> How do I manage what? How do I get downtime? Yeah. She doesn't like downtime. You know, actually, it, it's kind of true. I get very uncomfortable when I have like a lot of downtime. I, st I start to like just create random things because I'm, I'm like, ah, oh, I need to keep my mind engaged. And I, yeah, I, I almost feel uncomfortable because usually it's just, which is probably a bad thing. Because it makes you think about, but it, you know, it's um, like over Christmas break, I made myself take a break. And, um, yeah. Yes. You mentioned your girls before, and of course you've got Garvey and Drew here with you, but how is Becca and Sandra? <laughs> right? <laughs> what? Becky? Sandra? <laughs> I can't believe that caught yeah. on. <laughs> I did a My Girls episode one time. It was before I had, it was one of the tours where I didn't have like a girl on the road with me, so they became my girls. You got uh, shopping? I know. We got Becky and Sandra. We do. Anybody? No. Huh? What? No! <laughs> <laughs> Ask how spontaneously. They won't yeah, move on call. That's why it's so hard to hang. It's so hard to catch. I want to do another one, but they will go I want my rep to stay okay. <laughs> Not being like. <laughs> Uh, street cred? What street cred? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, yes. Uh, I tour with uh, four usually. So I've got my four little babies here. This one's probably my favorite. This is Excalibur. And it's the first violin that I bought when I was like, I'm going to be a professional musician. So this is like my baby. Um, then I've got some, I really like my Yamaha Electrics, I dazzled one, like I, um, but I, all together I think I have about 11 violins, um, um, so most of them are like props though, you know, like like a steampunk one that I, you know, took it just, uh, sometimes I'll buy really inexpensive violins and just turn them into cool looking props. <laughs> Uh, I knew her first manager, and she decided last minute before her first show to, to, to put together a band. And he called me, and he was like, well, can you do this? And I was like, I had never heard of her, and I was like, sure, this is trippy and cool. <laughs> this is like early May 2012, and uh, he was like, do you, do you know any keyboard players? And Gabby and I were in bands in LA, and so I called him, we flew to New York, learned like 17 songs in two days or whatever. <laughs> Changes and three tempo changes. I called through. I'm like, I can't do this. I'm like, I'm not doing this. Uh, he's like, dude, just do it. I'm like, I don't want to do it. He's like, just do it. Do something. It was awesome, and it's obviously worth it. It was. The funny thing is, I mean, literally, like, none of us really picked each other at all, and that's the cool thing about it is that, like, I really think things happen for a reason, and like, I can't imagine, like, I can't imagine what it would be like touring with anybody else, and uh, we just get along so well. Like siblings, pretty much. It's a very simple type relationship.
yes. Uh, you mentioned the piano guys before, but you've also done stuff like Hale, uh, Legend, and now the Grammy Award winning like Pentatonix. Yes. What is it like adjusting to like their different styles? And, you know, do you have a favorite out of all the ones you've done a joint with? Um, it, it's very different every time you go into a studio or a writing session with someone new, how different people do things, and sometimes you take little things from it and be like, I like that, you know. Um, but it, it, I think that's what keeps it fresh and keeps it new and keeps you from being too much in a routine, and that's why I love collaborating so much, because it's almost like you uh, find a different part of yourself musically and as a person when you're working with a different kind of musician. And like I said, the piano guys is probably my favorite one. Um, who else? I mean, I've done a lot of awesome... You know, I've, I've done so many that I've enjoyed. Uh, I love working with Peter Hollins. Uh, working with Al City was amazing. I, I, don't know if he's, uh, uh, I don't know if he's big out here, but he was really, really cool. Uh, maybe just a couple more questions. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you've done a lot of gaming kind of um, YouTube videos. Um, do you game as well? Do you like what console I did as a kid. I used to play, like, I, got, I had the original, like, Nintendo console, you know, where you'd have to, like, <laughs> um, so I was a big Mario fan, um, and then now I actually I love cosplay. I love dressing up as the characters. It's like my favorite part of it, and also the epic music just like calls for violin. So um, it's just like this perfect marriage of my, some of my favorite things: playing dress up, making music. Perfect. Um, yes. Are you going to be releasing a music video for We Are Giants? I probably will at some point. I haven't I haven't decided what that music video would be yet. But I should. That'd be a cool one. Lots of lots of big people. Should, should, I was gonna say, should Dia and I be giants or or should we be seeing giants? Or giants. Alright, well, apparently we're it is dad says, oh come here. Um
choked myself <laughs> the whole time. I was like sitting there. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Just sit on your ear. The little things, yeah. The things that you know, nobody thinks about until you're like, I don't think about it until it happens. Like, remember doing shows, I never thought about the fact that if I get an itch, on my face or anywhere, you know, song. I'm just like, dang it! Like my hands are taken the entire time, so, or like sweat gets in my eyes. She's like, oh! <laughs> 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 I remember realizing when I first started touring that I couldn't open water bottles. I was like in the middle of the set, and just being like, oh, it looks so good, but my my hand is taken. I only have one arm free. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Anyways, little things. <laughs> it's like a, a, a inside joke, Gabby Drew is the inside joke. Whenever we're like upset or scared. Little <laughs> kids <laughs> come out a lot inside of us. Okay. Anyways, thank you guys so much for coming. I mean, really, we are so excited to be here. This, I love coming somewhere for the first time. And um, to be able to do a show here in, in New Zealand is just so exciting. And um, really, I mean, it's a, it's a dream come true. There's nowhere I would rather be than performing. And uh, you guys make it possible. So thank you. Thank you so much. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you guys. <laughs> and um, we'll see you guys in just a little bit for the show. jump and bounce, the more I jump and bounce. So, I can tell it's going to be a good night. Thank you guys so much.
who I really was, this child that saw life with limitless potential, and I wanted to find that person again. And this song, it uses a ballerina in a music box to depict my experience in learning to break free. And in, her, in this video, in the case of this song, it's the song of the ballerina, and she's perfect, she's beautiful in porcelain, and she spins in this perfect pose. But when she wants, she begins to want to dance and express herself, and as she does so, she begins to crack and break. And she's terrified that if she breaks, she doesn't know if there will be anything left. And um, from my experience, I learned that you cannot love, you cannot love anyone else until you first learn to love yourself for what you really are and who you really are. Today, no matter, we all have inadequacies, nobody's perfect. And honestly, the closer I got to being what I thought was perfect, the more unhappy I became. And we're all different. We're all so different. And but that's why we're here. That's what makes us beautiful, is the fact that we're all unique. And I can guarantee you that the reason I'm successful is the very reason I was told I would never succeed. People said I was just too different, but I guarantee that's why you guys are here tonight. place as cheesy as it sounds the world is a better place when we share what makes us unique not what makes us the same and so um, that's what this song is about it's my story in in breaking free and discovering happiness again and learning to love and so this song is called shadow me Woo!